Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Final Fantasy 16. Last time we left off, we were hanging out over here, and I guess we gotta go talk to Sid now that we're, uh, now that we're out of prison, and Sid told us that we're pretty. Don't go making me throw you back in there now, eh? I, I'm sorry, okay? Sometimes I get a little angry. Sid brought back with him. I did. Poor thing, all dressed in dirty rags. I'll have to make a new dress for her. We're talking about, uh... We're talking about what's-her-face, right? Very quiet here right now. What are you doing out of the dungeon? I mean... Uh, so long as Sid's alright with it, I... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, maybe I'm out of the dungeon because Sid said so. Hey, Torgal. What are you doing, friend? Are you okay? Are you just standing there for, for no reason? Oh, okay. Okay, you decided that you had something you needed to do. <laughs> All right. I see I'm busy here. Uh, if you have new stuff, I need to go buy stuff from Karen. Hello. Hey. And what do you want? Uh, I want your stuff. If you're gonna buy some, it'd be quick about it. Let's see, bastard sword. Ooh, gold work sash. That's cool. I can buy one of those. And battle chains. While it is a rarity in the luster of gold that makes it the standard of wealth in this realm, the alchemist covers it for a lesser known third quality, ethereal conductivity. Unlike most metals, gold has the innate ability to channel ether and even amplify its effects, making it invaluable for those who wish to extract the full potential from a crystal or bearer. There's I will buy one. Price than that. Yep. And I will also buy some battle chains. When worn by a skilled combatant, the twin chains wrapped around about these otherwise simple bucklers can be used to ensnare enemy blades, providing the defender with precious moments in which to deliver unhindered counterattacks. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Cool. Breath of Wind, Rook's Gambit. Reduces Rook gam Rook's Gambit cooldown time by 2.7 seconds. Residual Wind Aether, that, having failed to dissipate on the battlefield, has instead manifested into a solid form not unlike crystal. Finished, are you? I don't really use Rook's Gambit anyway, but cool, I guess. I should probably give it a shot. But I like my other things so much more. Well, so would it be? It's weird that there's no, uh, there's no music here. Ooh! So spurred by her cries, did Wind become Storm? Akanamaki, Book of Gales, 1332. Cool. I'll take that. Yes. I will equip it. Um... Let's reinforce things, why don't we? Can I re- Okay, I can't reinforce that. Alright, so... Ooh, I also can't reinforce my, uh... Other things? I expected yes. to be able to reinforce those. Huh. Well, then I should equip my old stuff then, until I can reinforce those. Uh, because my old stuff is technically better. Yeah. So, put my old stuff back on for now, I guess. Fancy All right. When we're done. Does Titan ship boulders? Oh, there's the there's the line. Does Titan ship boulders? This is a cool looking sword. Hello. They said, how we doing? Finally crawled out of the crypt, eh? You look like it. Although I thank you for doing us the courtesy of covering up. Don't. Well, still have a bit of fight left in you. Then listen. I've arranged a meeting with Gav. In case you've forgotten, you're the one who's been putting his nose to work for. For nothing. Just listen. While you've been relaxing in your cell, Gav's been busy sniffing out your dominance. And according to his last report, he's picked up the scent. Gav's gone to a fair bit of trouble for you. The least you can do is hear the poor bugger out. He's going to meet us at the King's Fall. Pack your stuff. We'll leave as soon as you're ready. Yeah, I mean, Clive, even if you are Ifrit, it's very, very obvious at this point that this other... Dominant clearly has something to do with you, whether he's the one that actually activated Ifrit within you, or wants this whole thing to happen, or what have you. Clearly he's still 
involved in some way. What's this? Thirds is. Here you, newcomer. Why don't you join me for a drink? Hmm? I'm good. Okay, so we got something new for the Equestrian, right? Um, sound of silence. Listen to that. All right, so we got that going. Um, I can go up here and we can do. I guess I can save the the light reading for next time. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and go. Let's just go ahead and go. So where are we going? Over there. Sounds good to me. Bim, 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 bim. Travel to King's Fall. Here tumble the waters of the Empire's brooks and bournes to converge into a single resplendent cataract where a bygone king is said to have lost both life and kingdom. Yeah, I guess the, uh, the revelation that Clive, like, the revelation that Clive is Ifrit definitely went through my head. But I was like, given that initial cutscene, I was like, nah, there's no way though. So, it's interesting to see that, no, no, that is totally the case, but I am interested to see how this new dominant, um, actually factors into things. Or this other dominant, rather. Because he clearly has fire, too. Um... I wonder if, like, the logic is that... He made Clive awaken as Ifrit so that Clive would kill Joshua? And then that, that, that dominant clearly has fire magic, so maybe he's like, okay, now that Joshua's dead, I can get Phoenix. Maybe that's the thing? He had to, ki he had to get Phoenix killed so that he could take Phoenix or something? I don't know. So long ago, this here was a thriving trade route. Then the blight came. The people left. And just like that, it was deserted. Making it the perfect little shortcut. Dab's waiting for us up ahead. Come on. I want to see this really quickly. Kev and the Deadlands in Kingsfall. Barren waste bereft of ether, where no life stirs and magic is all but unusable. Here both earth and water are stained black, preventing any seed from quickening. In recent years, the blight has spread ever more wildly, displacing whole nations before it, driving once peaceable fauna to violent desperation and leaving silent devastation in its wake. Located in western Sandbrek, near the Rosarian border, the King's Fall is a towering cataract fed by waters of multiple converging tributaries. Though these waters long played an integral part in the lives of nearby settlers, an influx of displaced beasts fleeing from the Blight has forced many to abandon their claim to the resource. Still feeling sorry for yourself? A little, yeah. Don't. Please. Think about it, Clive. The rumors all point to... That was an Imperial signal. They shouldn't be here. The old fort's been abandoned for years. Our little chat can wait. I need to see what the bastards are up to. You go on ahead and meet up with Gab. But we both know that... No buts about it. Thank you, Sid. I need to be cheered up. Clive, you should pet your puppy. I find that usually that usually helps if you have a pet. You know? Just give him a just give him a little rub. The hunter and the hunted. Who is going to become the hunter and who's going to become the hunted though? Ooh, the music here is pretty. This is stupid. I'm the dominant of fire. We sent Gav on a wild goose chase. Well, I mean, as we've seen, there can be more than one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you're 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 a dominant of fire. You're not the dominant of fire. We've seen that being weird. You also have the weird power to steal people's shit, which is uh, pretty busted. If I do say so myself. Um. Okay, I guess we gotta fight some mud crabs. Oh no, these are spiders. Uh huh. Poor Black Widow. <laughs> that thing just got annihilated. There we go. 
New enemies approach. Ow. Poor sad Clive. Big smack. Alright, we took him out. Bunch of sharp fangs. It's okay, Clive. We'll get through this. God, I do like the music here, though. It's very, very peaceful and nice. And the environment that we're currently walking around in. Uh... Hi, Minotaur. Take down. Boom, big damage. Okay, managed to get that a little bit of extra in there at the end. Not this time. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. There we go. Hehehe. <laughs> God, having uh, access to two icons now feels very, very good. God, you are so slow in plotting, friend. It's super, super easy to beat you up. I feel sorry for you. There we go. Very, very much too slow. <laughs> Sorry, Minotaur. Hate to break it to you. Minotaur main. Main used in everything from helm crest to hairbrushes, primarily by those people lucky enough to have ever met with a Minotaur. And lo, did Sir Crandall strike the main from the beast and robbed him of his strength. Yeah. Some more bloody eyes. Well, rest in peace to that. Another perfect little shortcut, Sid. Straight to a nest of bloodthirsty beasts. Alright. Let's, uh, go check out our, uh... Let's see. I, like I said, I need to try, um... That other one that I got. Let's, uh, go over here. Rook's Gambit, yeah. Jump back, then deliver a punishing counter. If the jump evades an attack, counter potency is increased. Can be used in midair. Um, or I could buff these. Increases hits. Oh my god, that would be so good for Rising Flames. That would also be so good for Scarlet Cyclone! Oh my god. But I need to try it. I need to try it. I really do. Um... So, let's go ahead and swap out... I really, really like Gouge, but let's let's put on Rook's Gambit and just, just give it a shot. You know? Could be fun to use. Although, the getting used to the timing is gonna, gonna take some doing. There's also that thing back at base where I can, that I can get that actually upgrades this, which will be cool. Bum, 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 bum. 
Some sort of flying creatures hanging out over there. Magic ash. Jumpy. Much further now. Can I attack those things or are they just part of the background, I guess? Unless we get up there this way. Hello. There we go. Okay, so that's the that's using that in the air that I was doing. Whoopsie. There we go. Gotcha. Nope. Get this while it's down. Thank you. Don't let them get away. Ow. You bastard. There we go. Ravage. Ravage. Oh, I swapped back. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. But I had swapped back to potions. Alright. Good stuff. So it looks like we can go down over there, but there was more back here, right? That I wouldn't mind checking out? I guess that just leads to there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no. I thought there was another path back here, but I'm crazy. Alrighty. Alright, Lego! Another one? All right. Oh, oh God. Let me through. Ow. Yeah, that time I got I got kind of nailed. Uh huh. I tried to do the dodge there. Uh huh. Deadly embrace. There we go. Got it! There's the counter that I wanted. Good. Rook's Gambit, proud of you. Oh, you poor, poor thing. <laughs> Got the counter and everything. Yeah. Using that to jump up into the air and then doing the air dodge. Okay, I do really like Rook's Gambit. I mean, the gouge is kind of cool, but I really like leaning into counter attacks more. And uh, everything. The gouge does do a stupid amount of stagger, though. But I feel like it goes on too long sometimes, and you just have to mash. So I'd rather have, uh, I'd rather have the Gambit, I think, actually. Even though I was initially against it. What are you thinking, Clive? Look 
close that. This one's a dessert. Take his head out of my way. I'd like to see you try. Clive is back in it. As long as he has someone to protect, Clive doesn't care. Uh huh. There we go. Ah, I tried to do my attack. You could kind of see it there, but I couldn't get it off in time. Get back up. Oh, hey, you're blocking. Cute. Bye-bye. Ooh, one of you, huh? All right. Uh, you also have a dragon? Oh my god, the whole army's coming after me? I wonder who could have done that. <laughs> Clive, what's the situation? You're late. Get in trouble. What? The Imperials are on his tail. We have to get to him before they do. Understood. I'm here to even the odds. Any objections? Nope, I'm good. I'll take the dragon. You take the dragoon. Gotcha. Uh huh. Okay, let's go ahead and swap here. Gotcha. There we go. Deadly embrace. Oh, I missed. <laughs> that hurt me more than it hurt him. Whoop, I was trying to swap. Good parry. There we go. Uh Oh, I tried. I tried to do the cool. Alright. Just thought I would use a potion there really quickly. This takes me back to playing as a Dragoon on Final Fantasy XIV. There we go. Now you got me with that one. Not this time. There you go, friend. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, we're up to 500 uh, ability points, too. And I got a level. Burial Link. Many have tendered explanations as to how Imperial Dragoons are able to leech to sub sub such absurd heights. From the power of prayer to a strict diet of hare, toad, and crickets. <laughs> that's, that, 
Yeah, yeah, wow, okay. But none save the knights themselves know the truth. Whatever the secret, it is plain that heavy plate would only prove a hindrance, and so the Empire equips its dragoons with armor forged from lighter than linen mithril. This link is part of a vest that would have been worn beneath the breastplate. Interesting. <laughs> it's a rumor that they only eat hair, toad, and crickets. Can I have your dope spear? I really like spears. Come on. One-handed Gav, what a badass. Oh! Oh, get punted! He got drop kicked by a dog. Oof, that's a nasty cut you got there, friend. Probably tore a muscle, that sucks. Clive doesn't have your nose, I said. He'd stumble off a cliff, I said. Well, that's a trouble with a nose like mine. Can't help sticking it where it's not wanted. But if it wasn't for you two... My sniffing deers would be over. Thank you. Truly. So, what news? Well, I uh, found out where your friend's heading, for one thing. Gav, I... Him and his mate are on their way to your old stomping ground. Rosaria. You should have seen what they did to the Imperials who tried to stop them. There's no question about it. He's a dominant fire, all right. He can't be. Clive, I saw you turn into an icon before my very eyes. And yes, there's a good chance it was you who killed the Phoenix. But we weren't alone, were we? It was the fellow you saw enter the whirlwind. I... I saw him too. You didn't dream it, Clive. He's out there. But who is he? Don't ask me. I don't bloody know. Salamander, I guess. <laughs> we we need new icons. You know one thing. You're gonna find him and find out. After all, you swore an oath. What? You swore you'd avenge your brother's death. That you'd never rest until you'd hunted down the man responsible. So? Find out if this man's responsible, and kill yourself if he's not. Sid, I... Don't thank me. Thank Gav. <laughs> thank you, Gav. Yeah, I well, am. Well, there we go. Yeah, I mean, is there a possibility that there's two Ifrits? <laughs> is that an option? It's returning this year. The 
deadlands have swallowed their roosts, like as not. We're running out of time. We'll be in Rosaria in a day or two. Back to where it all began. Uh huh. Uh huh. He must be stopped. Hello. <laughs> um. Things. Things. Happening. Uh. Um. I mm, I saw the blonde hair, and I was like, huh. How weird are we going? Is the reason this person is the dominant of fire is because that's Joshua somehow? I don't... But this person was also there back then? Oh, uh, I mean, it kind of looks like Joshua, doesn't it? It kind of looks like Joshua. And I mean, he would be older now, Clive's older, but you're saying he must be stopped. Why, he was like a bleeding volcano. Never seen a volcano. What? You think I'm having you Clive. on? Clive! Your friend! She's awake! Right. <sighs> Go to her, you fool. Right, you lot. Enough slacking. Goots, come with me. Gav, go and get those wounds seen to. Oh, oh, give it to me straight. How long have I got? So? All in good time. Let's make ourselves scarce. Jill. I mean, I guess... I guess that couldn't be... I'm- I'm just being stupid, aren't I? I guess it couldn't be, um... It couldn't be Joshua, because didn't they re specifically refer to that person as, like... They just look really similar, I guess? I'm- I'm being stupid. Resident Physiker of Sid's Hideaway, Taria is an expert in all manner of medicines and medical interventions. Skills that are indispensable in their Deadland home, where they cannot call on healing magics. After Sid brings an unconscious Jill back to the Hideaway from his expedition to the Niza Defile, Defile, she is placed in Tataria's care. I mean, oh my god, it's a Moogle. A Moogle? Funny. <laughs> I wonder what it's trying to say. Koopo, probably. <sighs> They even have a Moogle. I've never seen one in the flesh. I love Moogles. Here I am, so drink it in, Koopo. I'm sure it's said in my father's bestiary that they live deep in the forest. And that they never reveal themselves to humans. Hmm, he knows his stuff, but what he doesn't know is that Nectar the Bold is no ordinary Moogle, Koopo. Nectar, you say? Clive. You understand Moogle tongue, Koopo? So it would seem. Finally, Koopo. I've been trying to talk to these people ever since the winds carried me here, but none of them understand a word I say. I've been banging my pom pom against the brick that wall. Painful. Yeah. But now you're here. My pom pom's safe at last. You can hear me. You can actually hear me, Koopo. Yeah. I sure can. It's our little secret, Koopo. God, I love Moogles. They're adorable. You tied it too tight, huh? Is it Sid's fault? Yeah, I'm like... They look very similar, right? This character and... Okay. Joshua. I don't, I don't know anymore if I'm just being stupid or what. Hello. Harpocrates. Like, I don't know. I've played, I've played too many JRPGs. I should be happy to answer it. 
I've played too many JRPGs and much, much too much Kingdom Hearts to ever, you know, cross out the idea that some, like, weird time shenanigans or clones or something like that can't happen. So, I'm like... It's like, look at you! Second son of the Archduke of Rosaria and heir to the Ducal Throne. And you're the Icon of Fire, which there's another Icon of Fire. And the other Icon of Fire... Yeah. And we can't really see your hair here, though. But that many believe to be a dominant fire, Clive saw him at Phoenix Gate on the night of the Imperial Invasion, and for years believed him to be the dominant of the Icon that killed his brother. But the Clive's eternal chagrin he has proved otherwise. So, yeah. I don't know that, I mean, I, I just, I, well, we'll see, we'll see. Time, time will tell, time will tell. But I mean, maybe the eyes weren't the same color? I'll have to look, because Clive, or, or Joshua has uh, blue eyes. Did that character have blue eyes? I'll have to rewatch my video and see. So I will probably know pretty quickly here. But the hair color looked similar, right? I guess maybe, yeah, Joshua's hair is more like kind of dirty blonde, whereas that hair was more like blonde blonde, I want to say. Maybe I'm, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm probably being stupid. Let's be honest. Leader of the Dragoons, the most elite warriors of the Holy Empire of Sam Brick, who are the first to leap into the fray when the Empire finds herself under threat, often literally. Dion is also the dominant of Bahamut, Warden of Light. Ah, Bahamut's light elemental. Interesting. Commander of the Kingdom of Eludes, elite intelligencers, and dominant of Garuda. After Clive took her power at Kaer Norvent and the keep was set to fire, she and her comrades were forced into making a hurried retreat, only to be set upon by bandits. What was left of Benedictus' power ran amok, summoning forth the raging whirlwind within when she at last was at last to lose her life at the hands of Clive Rossfield and his icon Ifrit. Alright, well... We'll check out some more of that later. I've got to I've got to rewatch that cutscene and get a better look at that character. I think, um, really quickly because I I I need answers. I don't I I'm jumping to wild conclusions, but so often the conclusions are wild. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, whatever. All right. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for some more.